Hello, I'm Ben from Digitechnical Support. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure a WireGuard VPN between two Digi Accelerated Linux routers. You can see here I'm using a TX64 and an IX30, both running firmware version 24.3.28.88. You can see the addressing that we're going to be using, and I've got space there left for the public keys. The first thing we need to do is start with a configuration. So let's go into the configuration screens on both these routers. We go into VPN and then WireGuard and add a new WireGuard tunnel. We'll call this WG0. First of all, we need to enable the device managed keys and enable that, and that's going to create a key pair. And we need to do this first of all on both devices so we can get the public key. Now that's been applied, we can go into status and then WireGuard. And this is going to show the public keys on each device. And we need to take a copy of these. So let's copy down the TX64 public key first and we'll drop that into Notepad. And then we'll do the same on the IX30. And we're going to use these shortly. So we've got those, we can go back into the configuration now. So that's system device configuration. And then back into VPN, WireGuard, and now we can continue with the configuration. First of all, on the TX64, which is the server side. We're going to add a peer. And this is going to be the connection allowing the, 30, sorry, the IX30 to connect. And here we're going to paste in the public key from the IX30. Scrolling down, there's an option here for a pre-shared key. We're not going to use this option, but just be aware it's there. And if you're using the pre-shared key option, the key does have to match on both sides. We're now going to add the peer. The address in allowed addresses is going to be the local and remote traffic selectors. So I normally do them in the order of the local, local subnet and then the remote subnet after that. And then I'm also going to add in the VPN addressing. This is the internal VPN addressing of the WireGuard VPN. It's a point to point link on a slash 30. And having this here will allow us just to do pings to the internal VPN addresses if we need to for testing. The endpoint address needs to be left blank. And the endpoint port and keeper lives can be set as shown. We now move on to the IX30 and do the same again. Add the peer. We'll give it a friendly name. And then add in the public key that we copied from the TX64. The allowed addresses are the local and remote traffic selectors. The subnets that are going to be routed to and from this VPN connection. So first of all, we put in the local subnet and then the remote subnet. And also we can drop in the, the subnet used for the VPN so we can ping the internal VPN IP addressing. And I'll just change this to end in dot zero instead of being the host address dot one and dot two, which we're using on either side. So the endpoint address on this device is going to be the public IP address of the VPN server, the TX64. On the TX64, the endpoint address is left blank. So this accepts VPNs coming inbound from any IP address. We'll apply those settings. So now we need to add a 
network interface. So we go into network interfaces and add an interface. I'm going to call it WG underscore int for WireGuard interface. And this is going to allow us to set up the IP addressing on the tunnel interfaces. So the interface type is going to be ethernet. The firewall zone, we'll set that to internal to ensure there's no restrictions on the VPN traffic. And the device is going to be the tunnel device that we set up in the previous step called WG0. Scrolling down now, we're going to add in the IP address for each end of the tunnel. And this is the slash 30 point to point addressing. So we're going to use 192.168.199.1 on one side. And on the other side, we're going to use 192.168.199.2. Let's apply those settings. And the next step is to assign some static routes. So we can collapse these sections and go into the routes section, into static routes, and add an extra route now for the VPN traffic. So we'll give it a friendly name. I'm just going to call this one IX30 Remote LAN via WireGuard and the destination is the other side LAN addressing. So 192.168.2.0 slash 24 which is the IX30 LAN network. The interface is going to be the WireGuard interface that was set in the previous step and we'll do the same on the IX30 now. So this is going to be the TX64 Remote LAN via WireGuard and the destination is going to be the LAN addressing or one of the LAN addresses on the TX64. The interface again is going to be the WireGuard interface and we can apply that. So that's the end of the configuration that's required on both sides. Now we can go into the WireGuard status and go and have a look at what that shows. And at the moment, it says there's probably packets sent but not received because the VPN was down at the time. So let's try and see if we can ping. First of all, we'll just check the routing on my Windows laptop. So it's got a route there for 192.168.254.0 via the IX30, 192.168.2.1. So we should be able to ping across the VPN now. So first of all, I'm going to ping the LAN interface on the TX64, and you can see that's successful. And now we'll ping the test host, which is ending in 123. And this is connected to the LAN interface on the TX64, and that should be successful as well. So we can see there we've got ping replies from the TX64 itself, going through the IX30, and also a host on the remote network. And now we've got packets sent and received. So that's great, the VPN is up. For more information on this or any other feature of your Digi Accelerated Linux router, please see the support pages at digi.com forward slash support.